So in this video, we're going to be talking about neoplasia and sort of the progression from normal tissue to um, neoplastic tissue or neoplasm. So neoplasia is, in the most basic sense, just any abnormal growth of tissue. And when this abnormal growth of tissue sometimes forms a lump, we call that lump a tumor. And tumors or neoplasms can be either benign, meaning non-cancerous, or malignant, meaning they are cancerous. And the difference between a benign or non-cancerous tumor and a malignant or a cancerous tumor is really the tumor's propensity to grow and to spread. So let's just pull up a slice of normal tissue. Okay, so here we have what we would call a normal distribution of cells in some sort of layer of tissue. And for our purposes, I'm going to say that this is just a layer through skin. So this is skin tissue. And so here we have, I'm gonna point out the basement membrane. And then as you can see, there is what we would call a normal basal to apical distribution of cells. So this surface is the apical surface, and then the layer of cells facing the basement membrane is called the basal surface. So if this were skin tissue, the apical surface is just the most superficial layer of skin cells or the epithelial layer facing the outside environment, and then the basal layer would be the deeper dermis of the skin. So this is an example of what normal tissue looks like. Now, one of the first stages in uh, neoplastic progression is what we call hyperplasia. So I'll bring up a picture of what this might look like. Um, all hyperplasia really means is that the cells have increased in number. Now, besides hyperplasia, cells can also undergo a change called metaplasia, which is when one adult cell type gets replaced by another. So say you have one part of the body where you have a pseudo-columnar uh, glandular cell. And say this morphs into, say, a squamous or square-shaped epithelial-looking cell. And another type of change in growth that cells can undergo is called dysplasia. And dysplasia is any abnormal growth with uh, loss of the cell's orientation to each other, they change size and shape, and lose a lot of resemblance to the normal tissue. So that would look a little bit more like this. Now these three types of changes are all considered to be reversible changes in cell growth, meaning uh, the cells can go back to their normal shape and size and orientation to each other. A couple of examples of irreversible changes would be neoplasia, which we'll discuss further as we go through the neoplastic progression, and then also two other types of uh, cell growth that are irreversible. The first being anaplasia, which would be abnormal cells lacking any sort of differentiation at all. They really um, resemble primitive tissue with close to zero resemblance to the normal tissue of origin. So that would look a little bit like this. And so as you can see, the cells are all different shapes and sizes. They don't really have any normal organization or orientation. It just overall looks unorganized. And then the final type of growth uh, that we'll be talking about is desmoplasia. So desmoplasia is just a fibrous response that I'll just represent by drawing these lines here, these fibers, um, to formation of a tumor. And remember that these two types of cell growth, uh, anaplasia, desmoplasia, along with neoplasia, are all irreversible types of cell growth, unlike metaplasia, hyperplasia, and dysplasia, which, as I said, are all reversible. Now, the next stage in neoplastic progression is what we call carcinoma in situ, which pretty much literally means cancer in this position or in this place. And here you can see the cells start to look a little different. They have um, a higher nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio, which would be the ratio of the nucleus to the rest of the cell cytoplasm. 
so high N to C ratio. And sometimes you'll see these little densities or clumps of chromatin within the nucleus, and those are what we call mitotic figures, which indicate that these cells are undergoing excessive cell growth and division. Once you've developed carcinoma in situ, we consider this to be a precancerous lesion or precancerous abnormal growth. And once you've reached the stage, you're at risk of progressing to invasion and metastasis. So here you can see that the neoplastic cells have invaded through the basement membrane, and they do this with the help of special enzymes that they produce called metalloproteinases. Uh, including collagenases, which help to digest the collagen that makes up the basement membrane, and also hydrolases. And if these neoplastic cells that have invaded through the basement membrane find their way to, say, a blood or a lymphatic vessel, which I've drawn here, and travel to a distant organ, then we would call that a metastasis, the final location where those neoplastic cells take root and then grow elsewhere. And there's something called the seed and soil theory of metastasis, in which the seed is the uh, cells from the original tumor, and the soil is whatever distant organ those cells travel to and then take root and grow, if you will. Now, there are a few common characteristics that certain neoplastic cells possess that predispose them to being more malignant. And we call this group of common characteristics sort of the hallmarks of cancer. And the first of these characteristics is the ability to create self-sustained growth signals. And sort of going along with that, um, cells need to attain the ability to ignore anti-growth signals. And neoplastic cells also need the ability to evade the immune system. The immune system is a built-in cancer-detecting system that we have in our body that can detect abnormal cells and either destroy them or cause them to undergo apoptosis. So neoplastic cells that are cancerous and have the ability to metastasize have found a way to hide from the immune system in some way and avoid apoptosis. Another hallmark of cancer is the ability to invade different tissues. So um, the metalloproteinases like collagenases and hydrolases that I mentioned before, so tissue invasion just to re-emphasize that. And finally, the ability to generate new blood vessels to help feed a growing tumor, in other words, stimulating angiogenesis, is a common characteristic in malignant tumors. And so for any number of reasons, these neoplastic cells have gained the ability to produce certain signaling proteins, such as VEGF, which uh, stands for vascular endothelial growth factor, which stimulates the formation of new blood vessels to help feed the growth of this tumor. And so these are the hallmarks or the characteristics of certain tumors that are malignant and therefore have the ability to metastasize.